द गुड नेचर्ड मैन बाय ओलिवर गोल्ड स्मिथ कैरेक्टर्स समरी एनालिसिस हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डिस्कोर्स द गुड नेचर्ड मैन वॉज अ लॉफिंग कॉमेडी ड्रामा बाय ओलिवर गोल्ड स्मिथ दैट वॉज फर्स्ट टेस्ट इन सेवनटीन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी एट इट प्रीमियर ड्यूरिंग द सेम टाइम वैन ह्यू कैलीज सेंटिमेंटल कॉमेडी फॉल्स डेलीकेसी वॉज रिलीज्ड एंड बोथ प्लेस ड्राइवल डीच अदर दो बोथ प्लेस प्रूव टू बी सक्सेसफुल फॉल्स डेलीकेसी बिकेम अ बिगर सक्सेस popular actor and critic david garrick rejected and criticized the good natured man because he was a producer and collaborator of hugh kelly's false delicacy and believed that the good natured man was an antidote to kelly's false delicacy samuel johnson and other, on the other hand criticized kelly's false delicacy and described it as totally void of character jeremy collier and thomas rymer attacked the comedy of manners of the restoration period as immoral As a response, sentimental comedy was promoted as a dramatic subgenre by dramatists like Richard Steele, Hugh Kelly and others. Oliver Goldsmith wrote an essay criticizing the sentimental comedy and said that in these plays the distresses rather than the faults of mankind made our interest and thus they failed to offer any moral message. He further lamented that in sentimental plays almost all the characters are good and exceedingly generous. they are lavish enough of their tin money on the stage and though they want humor have an abundance of sentiment and feeling the good natured man was a response through which oliver goldsmith showed the follies of a sentimental hero characters of the good natured man young honeywood is the protagonist of the play as he is a sympathetic sentimental good natured man who tries to be good for everyone he is so good and innocent that other people including his friends often take advantage of him Young Honeywood has lost his parents and he is the only heir of Sir William Honeywood the guardian uncle of Young Honeywood Sir William tries to change Young Honeywood's habit of helping others without checking their merit Sir William Honeywood devises a plan to trap Young Honeywood in lousy debt so that he may learn that none of his friends is willing to help him in his time of need Young Honeywood discovers the limits of goodness when his inclination to sympathize with everyone takes him to the verge of the losing himself Miss Richland is a beautiful young girl belonging to a rich family and holding an independent fortune. She is a friend of Honeywood and both love each other but shy away from admitting their love. Miss Richland has lost her parents and Mr and Mrs Croker are her guardians. Mr Croker is a friend of Sir William Honeywood who is exactly opposite to him. Mr Croker is a cynic, selfish person who is inclined to observe the defects of others. Leonine Leontine is the son of Mr Croker who loves Olivia an orphan girl from France. Lofty is another friend of young Honeywood who pretends to be sympathetic and benevolent to others while he is a cunning and greedy person. Summary of the good natured man. Sir William Honeywood is worried about his nephew young Honeywood. William Honeywood admits that young Honeywood is a good natured man with no bad habits. He treats everyone well and is benevolent to everyone. However, his easy generosity and sentimental sympathetic nature have led him into extravagance and foolishness. Sir William Honeywood talks about it with young Honeywood but fails to convince him that he needs to check his attitude toward other people. Thus, William Honeywood devises a plan to burden young Honeywood with such fictitious distress that he would face a jail term for bad debt. Sir William hopes that in such distress young Honeywood would be able to learn a valuable lesson by seeing which of his friends come to his assistance and which of them have you only been taking advantage of his generosity Lofty is a close friend of young Honeywood Mr Croker and his wife Mrs Croker are a bit cynic and selfish people who have suffered some bad times when they lost their only daughter Leontine is their son who learns that his long missing sister is alive and is living in France Mr Croker takes some money from young Honeywood and sends Leontine to Paris to bring his sister back. However, Leontine fails to find his sister. Instead, he falls in love with Olivia, an orphan girl whom he met in France. He brings Olivia back to England in place of his sister and intends to marry her. Meanwhile, young Honeywood comes in contact with Miss Miss Richland and falls in love with her. While Miss Richland too likes Honeywood, they both are shy enough to express their love with for each other. Miss Richland observes how helpful and generous young Honeywood is for others. However, young Honeywood finds himself in too much debt and when he asks his friends Mr Croker and Lofty to give the money back that he lent them in past, they show their inability to pay him at that moment. 
Young Honeywood tries to take the help of Sir William but fails to find him. As a result, Young Honeywood gets arrested for lousy debt that he failed to pay back. He seeks help from his friends but none of them arrive to help him. In addition, Lofty pretends benevolence and says that Honeywood should not worry much as he will make sure of his early release from jail by influencing the court in favor of his friend. When Miss Richland comes to know about young Honeywood's arrest, she decides to help him by paying his debt back. Sir William come comes to know about it and thinks that Miss Richland can be a great life partner for his nephew. Young Honeywood too loves Miss Richland deeply, but his generosity, benevolence, sentimental behavior and too much modesty create problems for him in developing a romantic relationship with Miss Richland whom he respects too much and doesn't wish to offend her by proclaiming his love for her. He is content to be only a friend of Miss Richland and vows to himself, never let me harbor a thought of making her unhappy by a connection with one so unworthy her merits as I am. Furthermore, young Honeywood is afraid that he may never succeed in pleasing Miss Richland's guardians, Mr. and Mrs. Croker, whom he knows is pretty cynical, greedy and selfish. While not being able to express his love was enough to distress him, his troubles increase as Mr. Croker decides to arrange the marriage of his son Leonite with Miss Richland to gain power over her inheritance. However, Leontine doesn't love Miss Richland and he wishes to marry Olivia whom he brought from France in place of her long lost sister. Mr. and Mrs. Croker still believe that Olivia is their daughter and Leonite's sister. Young Honeywood tries his best to ignore all these happenings while consoling his bleeding heart and convincing himself that he cannot attain her despite his love for Miss Richland. However, he fails to keep his distance from Miss Richland when his fake friend Lofty asks him to court Miss Richland for him and convince her to marry Lofty. Young Honeywood faces a sentimental dilemma and wonders what should he do. What shall I do? Love, friendship, a hopeless passion, a deserving friend. To see her in the possession of another is insupportable, but then to betray a generous, trusting friend, worse, worse. Sir William Honeywood observes the inability of young Honeywood in dealing with these circumstances and fears that his naivety may lead to long-lasting heartache for him and Miss Richland and thus he decides to intervene. First he lends enough money to Leonite and Olivia so that they may elope and marry each other. However, young Honeywood manages to ruin this plan of William Honeywood by telling Mr. Croker about the inn where Leonite and Olivia are supposed to stay. Mr. Croker catches Leonite with his own daughter and is aghast by their act. He praises Honeywood for his help and starts liking him, while Leonite curses him and blames him for betrayal. Sir William Honeywood arrives at the inn and informs Mr. Croker that Olivia is not his daughter but an orphan from France. He convinces Mr. Croker that Olivia is the daughter of one of his old acquaintances. He says she is an orphan belonging to a good family with a huge fortune. Mr. Croker agrees to the marriage of Leontide with Olivia. Meanwhile, young Honeywood decides to express Lofty's love to Miss Richland and when he goes to meet her, she expresses her love for young Honeywood. However, Honeywood mistakes it as an approval of Lofty's love for her. He pretends to be happy at helping his friend but within he is very sad and exclaims that nothing remains henceforward for me but solitude and repentance. Sir William Honeywood again comes to rescue young Honeywood by showing the duplicity of Lofty and proving that he is no friend and well-wisher of Honeywood. Honeywood gets rid of the dilemma of choosing between a friend and his love. Miss Richland too clarifies that she never expressed her love for Lofty and she always wishes to marry young Honeywood. Going through all these ordeals, young Honeywood gets his life lesson and closes the play by declaring, it shall be my study to reserve pity for real distress, my friendship for true merit and my love for her who first taught me what it is to be happy. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of English literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.